So, in this module, we will try to sum up a number of things that we have done about relative homotopy. In particular, I will try to illustrate how this theory helps you to see that two given spaces are homotopy whenever they are, of course, in many somewhat easy situations without writing actual homotopy equivalence. Okay. To begin with, you take any point in Rn. It is an NDR. Namely, deformation, neighborhood deformation retract. The same thing applies to SN also, once it is for RN. What is the meaning of neighborhood retract? Neighborhood deformation retract. We have all those big list of things. Function U, function H, and so on. It essentially says that there is a neighborhood of the given subset. That neighborhood actually deformation retracts to the subset inside a slightly larger neighborhood. In fact, this is the case with many other examples uh, of subsets of Rn. For example, any smooth arc will be a deformation NDR space, NDR subspace. Okay. So, the tubular neighborhood theorem in differential topology, if you have learned, will tell you that a manifold and a submanifold, let us say closed submanifolds, huh, or compact one, whatever. In general, manifold and submanifold is good enough. That forms an NDR pair. Later on, when you study simplicial complexes, you will have many examples of NDR pairs. In particular, when you have NDR, namely, inclusion maps a co-vibration. That's the easier way to say the whole thing, right? If A contains an SN, is an arc. Arc is contractible. I can use the theorem that the arc, which is contractible, can be collapsed to a single point to get a space, namely Sn by A, homotopy equivalent to Sn. You take any closed convex subset of Sn, you collapse it to a single point. Again, what you get is Sn. Okay. If you are asked to write down Homotopy equivalence is every time. You will see how horrendous it is. But the theory is easy to remember and easy helps us. This is, what, this is the point I want to tell you. Let us consider a little more complicated example. Let us take the sphere along with one of the diameters. Okay, so that is my space X. By collapsing one of the great arcs which joins the endpoints. Endpoints of a diameter can be joined inside the sphere through a great arc, right? To join them, okay, there is an arc. Okay, now you collapse that R to a single point. Earlier I have seen that Sn, S2 here, S2 modulo that R is again homotopy type of S2. But now you had an arc there. The end points of those two arcs come to a single point. Therefore, there will be an S1 now, a circle. And this circle and the sphere will have only one point in common. 
So such a thing is called one point union is denoted by S2 union S1. Okay, one point here, one point here are identified. So this Y is a one point union of two spaces S2 and S1. So our original space S2 along with this diameter is homotopy type of S1 union S2. It's one point union, not disjoint union. It's only one common. It's like a balloon construction. Okay. So if you are asked to write down a homotopy equivalent, you will have to go through the whole lot of things or write down formulas and so on. There is no need. Use the theory. Okay. Many topologies have this uh, habit of not explaining this to you at all. They will just say, oh, this is obvious. What they say, if at all, if you ask, they say, oh, these two points can be moved on S2 so that they come together. That's all. We can move one end point, uh, end points of diameter slowly to coincide with its other end point along the arc, great arc. But this is not a proof. But if you do anything in between, they are all of the same homotopy type. In fact, in between stages are all homeomorphic to each other. The end result is not homeomorphic because the two points of the diameter end points have come together. Right? So original space and and this S2 union S1 are not homeomorphic to each other, but they are homotopy type of same thing. So to a beginner or an outsider, all these things are just guy is hand waving and so on. Okay, but an expert topologist knows exactly what is the proof also. All right, he will give you heuristic arguments like this. So here is a picture. So I have taken the sphere and this diameter, one of the diameter. So this is my X. So I start moving it along this arc all the way here, great arc. So this is the middle uh, stage here. Okay. The diameter has become like this. Okay, so finally it will go and all the way coincide with this one. So this will be also become a loop or a circle. And along with the sphere, this point is on the sphere. Okay, see this, the, this time dress come like that. Okay, so this is like a, or you can take North Pole. So at this point, there is a circle attached to the sphere. So this is S2 edge S1. So this, this picture and this picture are have the same homotopy type. This and this have had actually homeomorphic pictures out. So you can have a homeomorphism mapping any point of the circle, any point of the sphere to any other point, keeping this point fixed. Such homeomorphisms are there of the sphere. So, you can describe this one one way I told you, namely, you have collapsed this arc. But then you have to know what happened to the sphere. But that space x by a, you are collapsing an arc. Its same homotopy type is, is assured by that uh, theorem. Alternatively, what you can do is, you can think of this as an adjunction space. S2 is Y. Your Z is the interval I, the diameter I. What is X? X is the endpoints. What is F? F takes one endpoint to the south pole, another endpoint to the north pole. 
when you take perform the uh, adjunction space, what you get is this one. Okay, so your x is two point space, end points of a an interval. From that, you can have different maps. Maybe in this in this in this picture, one point always goes to this point, but the other point goes to different points here. Think of this as a map from S0 to S2. The two maps are homotopic to each other. The final picture is both the points have gone to the same point. That is also homotopic to the original map inside S2. The adjunction space, homotopy adjunction, homotopy invariance of adjunction space says that all these spaces, whatever adjunction space you have got, they are all of the same homotopy type. Okay, so that is what I have explained. So you can think of this as boundary of minus 1 plus 1 with S0. The maps from S0 to S2, which keep one of the points fixed, they are all homotopy to each other because S2 is connected, that's all, path connected. Okay, so one can give many such examples of uh, whatever we have done. So I come to a slightly deeper question here now. The above result about cofibration, cofibration was essential here, by the way. So adjunction space performed on on a subspace which is inclusion maps cofibration allows you to do all this. Remember that. So the result of cofibration may encourage one to ask the bold question such that the following, namely, suppose you have an XA topological pair where A contains an XA cofibration. Okay. Now let two maps f and g from x to x be such that on a they agree f a equal to g a f of any singleton a equal to g of singleton a for every a inside a that is the meaning of this f restricted to a g restricted to a suppose f is homotopic to g then is f homotopic to g relative to a This question was motivated by weak deformation retracts or deformation retracts. And then, if singleton point is a uh, cofibration, then any deformation retracts or strong deformation retract and so on. Remember that theorem. So, would you like to have just arbitrary homotopy? Will it be relative homotopy? Of course, without A being a co-vibration, we know that this is not possible. All right. So, under the assumption that A to X is co-vibration, will it be true? The answer is again negative. Okay, that's why I said it's a bold question. But the answer is negative. So this is where an expert and a hand waver will be distinguished. If a person has learned only hand waving, he will go and do this kind of mistakes. Okay, this is only an example. There are lots of people who have fallen into this kind of traps while doing algebraic topology. So, it is important to learn where your theorems come from, how they are originating. The fundamentals things should be very clear. Okay. So, here is a counter example which is which cannot be completed at this stage because you have to do some computations. I have I have given those exercises. If you haven't done those exercises, then you will not be able to understand it completely. But Modulo that, I will explain it to you.
okay so what is this this counter example is also simple you start taking the cylinder s1 cross i x is s1 cross i a is s1 cross 0 union s1 cross 1 namely the two brims the boundaries of s1 cross i okay the two circles okay a to x is a co vibration so this we have seen before okay double points minus 1 plus 1 or 0 1 contained inside i that is a co vibration then you take the product of this one so this one way there are several ways of seeing this one the first thing is that the boundary included inside s1 cross i that inclusion map is a co-fibration. Okay, that is the first exercise. Now you take the function f of z t equal to e power 2 pi i t z times t. So I am multiplying the first coordinate z. I am thinking this as a complex number of unit uh, unit length. Okay, first coordinate is complex number, second coordinate is real number. e power 2 pi i t times z will be another complex number of the of unit t, so multiplication will be again a complex number of unit length. So f of z t is e power 2 pi i t z. It just means that at time t I have rotated z through an angle t, 2 pi t. That is the meaning of this. At t equal to 0, e power 2 pi i t is 1, so this is z, no, no, no rotation. At t equal to 1, what will happen to this one? It would have been rotated 2 pi i, right, through 2 pi, so it comes back to z. So, this map, t equal to 0 and t equal to 1, is the identity map. f of z t, f of z 0, f of z 1, both of z comma t. Okay. Z comma 0, Z comma 1, whatever. Okay. So take this and G to be the identity map of S1 cross I to S1 cross I. Alright. So this is a F my F is of my from X to X. So I have two maps here. Let us take H of Z T S, namely now it is a homotopy. S1 cross I cross I e power 2 pi i t s times z t. If s is 0, oh, t plus s or did I write it as t plus s? Yeah. It's not t s, it's t plus s. There's a typo here. If s is 0, I want identity. If s is 1, t plus s times 2 pi i, the bracket should be there. It's also 1. Okay, so it will be identity. Gives a homotopy between the two maps. I want when t equal to 0, I want it's a 2 pi i t z t. Okay, okay, it's a multiplication only, sorry. Okay, it's multiplied. t equal to 0, it is e raised to 0 is identity z t. This identity map g, t equal to 1, it is this map. Sorry, this is correct. Okay. So, the first map is t equal to 0, it is the identity map. Then this is f, when t equal to 1, s equal to 1. So, this gives a homotopy between two maps, g to f. I want to say that f and g are not homotopic relative to A. The points of A here in this in this uh, thing are moved, they are rotated also. Okay. So relative to A, they are not homotopic. If you want to keep them fixed, they are not homotopic to each other. When you want to say they are not homotopic, it is not that you cannot construct one, I cannot construct one, and so on. We should show that 
there cannot be homotopy relative to the end points, the S1. S1 cross 1 and S1 cross uh, cross uh, 0 should, all the points of that should be kept intact while the homotopy takes place. How to do that? So that takes a little more effort. So let us go to the quotient space, namely identify S1 cross 0 with S1 cross 1. Z comma 0 be identified to Z comma 1. Then what you get? You will get S1 cross S1. So that is a quotient map. Okay. By identifying Z cross 0 with Z cross 1 for each point z in s1 then what happens to this f and g g will give you identity map okay whatever f f will be also give you because the points corresponding z0 and z1 are identified under this map they will also get identified correctly so capital g capital f are in, in induced maps from s1 cross s1 to s1 cross s1 okay G will be identity, F will be some other map given by capital F. That there is a map like this, this is what you have to see. Okay. Because Z0 and Z1 are not moved by this e power 2 pi i t. Right? That's why that makes sense here. All right. But what is the difference between F and G? F fixes the, there is an image circle here, image of the boundaries of this one, two boundaries of that. On that one, both F and G are identities. But along the circle here, the other circle here, F is twisting. F is twisting the other circle exactly once. Whereas G is identity. So somehow you have to distinguish these two phenomena. And this can be distinguished by looking at the fundamental group. The application of fundamental group to show that there cannot be a homotopy between F and G. If there is a relative homotopy between little f and little g, namely identity, that would have boiled down to give you a homotopy of capital F and capital G. Right? Therefore, by showing that this capital F and capital G are not homotopic here, you would have proved that F and G cannot be homotopic relative to the boundaries. So, finally, you have to do this one. For this, you have to compute the corresponding homomorphisms on the pi 1. You have computed the pi 1 of S1 cross S1 is Z cross Z, the abelian group of rank 2. Okay, because pi 1 of S1 is Z. Okay, using that, you can compute the fundamental group of uh, homomorphisms induced by F. Induced by G, it's an identity map because G itself is identity. So what happens to F? That's what you have to show. Okay. So that's what you have to do. Okay. So I have left it at the stage. Using those two exercises, you can see that this is absurd because the fundam at the fundamental group level, okay, the generator of well, first generator goes to identity. Second generator goes to this, this generator plus that generator, not just identity. First generator goes to second generator goes to identity is, is for G. For F, it will be, suppose we take A comma B are generators. Then F check of A will be A, but F check of B will be A plus B. 
whereas g check of a is a but g check of b is just b because b, g is identity so this is what you have to verify so finally i conclude one of the theorems that i have read from hatcher's book okay which says that though arbitrary homotopies are not possible homotopy equivalence is possible which is a very remarkable result because it is just the borderline thing and the proof is quite tricky proof therefore i want to say that since i have nothing to add okay i have given you a reference here if you want you can if you want to learn you can read it from hatcher's book okay what is that i will state the theorem the theorem is x a y a satisfy homotopy extension property okay they are ndr pairs suppose f is a homotopy equivalent then f is a homotopy equivalent relative to a as a pair so this is a wonderful result okay but the proof does not follow from anything that you have done so far you have to cook up cook it up by using some tricks so i am not going to give this proof because i am not going to use this result either here but this was one of the questions how to determine relative pairs if they are just homotopy equivalence x and y then they will be homotopy equivalent to each other relative to a what is this a, a could be anything but inclusion map okay a is a subspace common subspace inclusion map is a co fibration is a nest that's all all right so this is the end of this session thank you